My mother always told me to look death in the face, to not be afraid of it. If someone in the family was dying, she would drop everything to be there. And she would always take me. The first time I saw someone die, I was nearly three years old. There have been many others since then, but this, the death of my uncle, remains with me. It was winter. I was at nursery building a castle with Lego when my teacher told me my mum was outside. We got on the bus to the hospital, and on the way she told me it was time, that I need to see him so that his good soul passes on to mine. I didn't say anything. I didn't understand. All my family were at the hospital. Sadness in their faces. I wanted to go back to the nursery, finish my castle. Mum took my hand and she whispered, look straight into his eyes. If his eyes are closed, look at his face. Do that, and you will live a life without fear. But I froze. She said, come. And then I became hysterical. What if he doesn't look like uncle anymore? He didn't look different. He looked like he was sleeping. He had tubes in his mouth and nose and a drip in his arm. At first I thought there were straws sucking the life out of him, but it was the other way around. They were keeping him alive. Mum told me to move closer, hold his hand. So I did. Then something happened. He went into convulsions. I was scared. But I didn't let go. Everyone around me started to panic, but I didn't let go. Then I remembered what Mum said. Look at his face. And I looked. And I wasn't scared anymore. He suddenly stopped moving. His breathing became deep and heavy. The doctor came in, took out the tubes. My auntie started praying. But my uncle was still breathing, even without the tubes. And I watched the signs of life on his face. Then his eyes opened for a moment, and he saw me. I smiled. He let out his last breath. And then it became still, right there, looking at me. 
everyone stopped. As if we were all suspended in time. Then I put his hand out, turned, and walked away. Behind me, I heard the prayers and tears start again. But I had done what I had to do. I didn't realize at the time how much that day would affect the rest of my life. I found I needed to be around death. And when I wasn't, I didn't feel alive. I became an aid worker. And that is when I faced real death. Bloody, savage, death. The rest of my life, I didn't feel alive. I started to write a journal for my thoughts. I don't know if it was to forget or to remember what I'd seen. I watched a British soldier die from losing too much blood. An Iraqi man was missing limbs after a cluster bomb An exploded. Afghan girl who lost part of her head after skipping a on a minefield. A Sudanese woman die in childbirth and her elderly mother who had An lost An American her. female soldier damaged by shrapnel. Men and women caught in the crossfire and unwanted war. After a few years I'd seen so much death the word itself became meaningless. Words became meaningless. I have hundreds of souls dancing inside me. 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 And one day, I held a baby. A newborn. I held her tiny hand and looked into her eyes. What do I do? I don't know what to do. My mother always told me to look death in the face and not be afraid of it. But I was afraid. Afraid if I let go. So will she. So I didn't let go. She closed her eyes. But I didn't let go. She stopped breathing. I didn't let go. The nurse. What is she over her? But I never let go.